Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Well, uh, it's sad that we are here today under these circumstances. There's certainly management issues at uh, WMATA, and I'll get into that in a moment, but uh, let's get to the bottom line here. Uh, Congress has neglected to make sufficient investments in infrastructure. Everywhere in the country, cities are struggling between pressure to build out more transit and new options, and that's certainly going on here in what is arguably potentially the most congested traffic region in the United States of America, and then maintaining their legacy systems, and Congress hasn't been willing to be an equal partner. Eighty-four billion dollar backlog nationally to bring transit up to a state of good repair. Yeah, the FAST Act is going to give us a little more money. That's good. But uh, with the amount of money uh, there, uh, we're never going to get a state of good repair. Never. It's going to continue. We're just about treading water. And right now, uh, DOT says the average annual level required to eliminate the backlog is $18.5 billion a year. And, well, we're putting up 10. Uh-oh, that doesn't sound too good, does it? It's pretty embarrassing when in what's called the capital of the free world, the greatest country on earth, American exceptionalism, we're killing people on a transit system with a combination of budgetary pressures and management issues. Now, I think we're going to make real progress on the management issues, and we'll hear about that later today. But what about the money? We cannot ignore the need for additional investment. Now, when the so-called American Recovery Act passed, which I voted against because 4% of that 800 and something billion dollars went into infrastructure investment, 4%. Cities like Chicago just pulled projects off the shelf. They had the money committed in 30 days. They could have spent 10, 20 times as much money on projects sitting on the shelf waiting to happen that are critical for the safety and security of their riders and, obviously, the efficiency of the system. So we cannot ignore the 1,000-pound gorilla in the room. We aren't putting up the money. We need to be a good partner. We only partner 50 percent, and we don't pay, we don't help with operations. And, you know, we're just walking away from that. So that's why we're here today. So let's not just say this was a management issue or, oh, gee, they spend more money or, gee, they're less efficient. Yeah, those are all issues. But the bottom line is this is not a unique circumstance. This, what is happening here in Washington, D.C., is getting attention. But there's, that's happening in every major legacy system across the country today, and it's happening in cities that want to give their people new transit options and have to choose between running a bus with a billion miles on it that's breaking down every day, maybe the brakes don't work so well, and giving people those new options to get them out of congestion. We shouldn't have to make those choices. The country, the United States of America, can afford to do both. We can afford to partner and help them rebuild and maintain and build out the new options. But it's going to take a new attitude here in Congress. I've offered many ways to help increase transit funding and highway funding. Uh, they've all been rejected. We weren't even allowed to vote on one single option, one amendment, when we did the FAST Act. They were not allowed. Many were offered, including bipartisan that dealt with funding. We pretended. In fact, we took money from the TSA to help pay for that bill, and now people are standing in line at the airports. Wow! We're going to keep shuffling stuff around until nothing works in this country anymore. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I look forward to the hearing.